So if you want to start or grow a YouTube channel this year, then you're going to want to watch until the end of this deep dive training all about how to get more views, especially if you feel struck stuck right now on YouTube or if you want to start right. And I'm actually going to be joined by my friend Rob from vidIQ today. We're going to be going through some multiple different YouTube channels and all kinds of different niches. So I'm certain that what you're going through, your type of content will be covered inside of this training. And there's going to be a lot of nuggets and insights along the way in terms of how do you get subscribers, what's working on YouTube right now, and how can we improve our videos, our thumbnails, the optimization of our channels overall, and it's going to be super rich. So smash like if you're fired up to dive into it. I want to welcome Rob back to the Think Media Podcast channel. Rob, how's it going? Hey, Sean, and hello, all Think Media rights. It's great to be here once again. Sean, I love how you switch from one camera to the other. It is so seamless. And that's the next thing I want to learn as a content creator. But really looking forward to more channel audits. I've already done two hours of it today, so I should have my auditing chops on, ready for another wave of enthusiastic creators and their channels. Well, let's kick it off with Tiffany Lynn. And here we are on her channel world schooling family lifestyle and travel vlogs if we head over to the description this is the go-to channel for discovering family friendly destinations south africa western cape of south africa expect expect lots of travel Sixty-two thousand views on her channel overall no community tab posts my heart just sunk but there <laughs> is an opportunity for Anybody with a community tab, which is almost everybody these days, once you just set it up in the back end, um, we're posting a few shorts. We are posting um, many videos, and we'll look at those in just a second. And as we tap into our vidIQ tool, eight uploads in the last month, 30 new subscribers, 2,609 views. And uh, cool to see that Tiffany already has some momentum. And so what are some of your initial impressions, Rob? First of all, Tiffany, congratulations on meeting at least one milestone of monetization, 1,000 subscribers. That is awesome to see. You are going to some what appear to be spectacular places, especially this Pal Rock. Apologies if I've mispronounced that, but that looks like an epic scene there. I am curious as to the montage style of thumbnails. I like the idea of almost having like that search magnifying glasses of the thumbnails at the top, um, Sean, that I was looking at, which give you the location and then four different scenes from that location. For me personally, it looks a little cluttered, but I know this montage style works in certain niches such as uh, halls and dollar store halls and some uh, beauty style channels. But to me, it seems to be reducing down the size of a potential uh, destinations that they're going to. So they look a little cluttered, especially the Africa burn one. There's something in the bottom left-hand corner, of a, I, but I can't work out what it is. Is it animals? Is it insects? Is it bracken? Because it's so small, and this is even, even on a desktop thumbnail. Imagine how it looks like on a, a mobile uh, postage stamp thumbnail. It might be really difficult to see. But having said that, Sean, I think there's a lot of good foundations here. They are sticking to the value proposition of showing him uh, de family destinations in South Africa. So, yeah, promising stuff here. Yeah. And so a big takeaway is simplify your thumbnails. And especially with these shots, too, they're not even cropped in shots. They're wide shots on their own. And mm -hmm. so to have a wide landscape shot only given 25 percent of the thumbnail could be challenging. And of course, this deals with topic, but the most popular video on the channel has a very simple background, two clear passports, which is the desire of how to get the dual citizenship, a nice photo. It is, it's applying the rule of three, which is three elements. In this case, the passports would kind of be like one element, but technically there's literally three things. There's our, there's the individual and the two passports. And some of these other best performing, again, topics have a lot to do with it. But I think if you could simplify down to your point, this happy, the Harvest Festival, I'm sure a lot of cool stuff was happening there, but just you there with the one photo um, simplifies it. And, and this home tour as well, just one amazing shot that doesn't even actually show the home, really. You assume you're viewing from the view, but that's, uh, uh, I think, some clues of simplifying the thumbnails. Let's um, preview out a little bit of the latest video. 
Hi, you guys. Welcome back to my channel. And this is Tiffany. In today's video, I want to share another unique experience our family had about two weeks ago, and that's helping friends prepare for the Africa burn. <laughs> So I do think there's an opportunity here to not open up with, hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I think you could say that later, but as far as the structure of the hook, I think we could say, um, the, you could start with the music. You could start with this montage. Mm, yeah. Keep the music pumping. You, I noticed you made the music go down to highlight that speaker's audio, but I couldn't tell what she was saying. That was... So you might just tease, you're, you're giving a preview of coming attractions, or you might do a voiceover here and you're like the Africa burn, you know, da, da, da. It's this, it's this. And you want to create some intrigue. Part of Africa burn. Yeah. The mixing of the audio there, as you pull the music down, the on-camera audio could probably be turned up. I don't know if that's necessary. Good mixed music and good voiceover here would probably be my favorite. Maybe make this a little bit shorter with just a lot of quick hits. And then you go, hi guys, welcome back. And I guess we're now entering into a kind of a vlog situation here. So Rob, any thoughts on this content? Yeah, I would agree that the, uh, the opening montage was fresh and exciting. It had energy, but as you say, it went on a little too long, it felt like. Sometimes you have to, what's called, kill your darlings and say, this is a cool 30-second montage. But actually, to keep the viewer engaged, it needs to be 10 seconds long. And then maybe I can insert a little more of that montage a little later on to you know, keep changing the pace of the video. But I think in terms of the, the footage that they've um, recorded and how it was stitched together was really promising from a, a video perspective. Yeah, and the video editing skills here, I think with improving in video editing and maybe the structure and the order of the storytelling is a big opportunity. I think one huge takeaway for today, and if you're watching live, smash like, drop an aha moment that you want to apply to your channel, but kill your darlings. We can fall in love with our own projects, but sometimes just because we're having fun with the footage, what is going to be most effective? And to your point, a 30-second montage versus a 10-second montage, it forces us to make the shorter montage stronger like um uh one of the wu-tang clan members once said make it half short and twice strong mm -hmm. and so great channel there uh, by the way today's uh episode is brought to you by vidiq and there's an exciting new tool that vidiq has we're going to share that later but you can actually get a 30-day trial of vidiq's paid plan for just one dollar at vidiq.com forward slash think and uh rob is going to keep He's going to drop some more wisdom a little bit later on this. Let's dive into our next channel, which is Ashley NV, social media strategies, marketing, social media growth, YouTube strategies. Subscribe for TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube tips, free training courses, email address, weekly videos. Ashley Volarez, mentor and marketing coach. And we have a Five new subscribers, 13 uploads, 2,400 views. And we are posting some YouTube shorts over here. Let's actually check this out. I'm struggling to get leads. Check out these simple yet effective ways to start generating leads and getting them contacting you. Like many. I To me, I feel like this could be uh, a little quiet. I can't adjust the volume Agents of this. In my group, I could be wrong. I'm the number one agent in their state. As a new agent. But on desktop, yeah, and I think on mobile, you could just adjust your, oh, in both cases, I think you just uh, adjust your overall audio, but I can't actually mix this audio. That I could be wrong. Let me compare this to one of your videos. Are you trying to use AI? Maybe it's about the same. Clients and not have to do the research yourself or the writing. Well, this is a video. Okay, cool. Good energy. We're going to circle back to that. So, Rob, what are your thoughts? So, this is a channel that's, I guess, in its essence, relatively similar to ours, um, Sean, and that they're trying to help um, people increase their influence, income, and impact. I think that was the um, the saying from video influencers, right? That was the three eyes from what I remember. You're right. And one thing I might notice, a lot heavy, heavy real estate. There's a lot of how to get leads in real estate. Mm. Okay. And so heavy, that's... I think heavy in marketing, because while we serve right. a lot of creators, yeah. 
I think we're looking at probably business owners. In fact, she's EXP, which is a, her group is EXP, which is a, a, a real estate um, kind of, kind of like Keller Williams, which is also kind of a network marketing model uh, at some level, if I understand it properly. So, so she's, it would seem teaching gen generally social media and marketing, but with an emphasis maybe in what she's doing inside of EXP because they've become one of the top groups at EXP, which is a massive movement. So okay. back to you. So I think the channel banner, if that is true, should be a little more explicit in that it may be focusing on real re realty uh, in a social me market, media marketing world. Uh, thumbnail wise, uh, I think they're a, a solid start. I would like to see a bit more of a um, contrast between foreground and background because it looks as if a background that she's, I think, dropping herself in is flat. So we don't get that nice contrast. Like my eyes tracking the, the seat and the monitor in the background as well as her lower resolution cutout uh, at the front. Um, another thing to consider as well here is uh, credibility. So this channel currently has, I think, what was it, under 100 subscribers? I'm trying yep. to remember. Under 100 subscribers. And they are trying to help other um, people on YouTube to build their reach. And I don't know if they have the credibility to do that in the sense that you must uh, follow these ideas. Uh, when I'm a smaller channel. Having said that, the view counts look quite encouraging. They are several hundred for the subscriber size of under 100. So I'm just wondering if one of the series they may like to do on their channel is their own journey of growth on YouTube. So what they learned when they hit their first 50 subscribers and their first 100 subscribers. So it's almost as if somebody watching their content is following them on the journey as well. But I'd love to know your thoughts about that, Sean. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of second guessing myself now. I'm wondering, is it right to judge the creator just on a subscriber size, but it is about growing the influence on a, a social media platform? I think what you're making a great point. Credibility is a, is a big deal. If you're going to position yourself as a marketing expert, I think the opportunity here for Ashley though, is especially when I look at her most popular videos is for example, face, uh, she did a Facebook ad that got 586 clicks to get real estate online leads. So it would seem her expertise would probably be more in marketing and maybe based on the channel, less in YouTube strategies. Mm, she's leveraging yeah, YouTube, yeah. but she's dropping case studies of stuff she's doing elsewhere. Yeah. So I think honing in your expertise, if it was to say like proven strategies for helping you get leads and customers, and, and to your point about niching down, perhaps in real estate alone, like the number one source to help you get leads, because here's free video, video editors for realtors. That's just a practical tip. All the top videos, even Instagram, and she's getting clients off Instagram, it would seem it would seem that YouTube itself, and then over time, she could be building that up. And she's got a couple of new videos. Even with these levels of views, I'm sure that done properly, it's not about the size of the channel because that the metric of success for the creator is the size of the channel. The metric of success for the business owner would be leads, customers, transactions. So to your point, honing in your extra expertise, so she's standing on more credibility, that'd be one. Two, I would love to see like 80% of the words eliminated from everywhere. <laughs> from <laughs> from the banner, 80% less words. From the thumbnails, less words. Um, I think especially when it's, there, there's just a lot of words. It kind of almost feels like a lot of clutter. And I think that simplifying things that you don't need to echo the title in the thumbnail, best free video editors for real editors. It says best free video editors for real estate agents. So it literally could be just you and a picture of, the four logos, you could be much larger in the four logos that you're recommending of video editors within that. And then one thing that I want to hit on is I want to you. You acknowledge ways, you style. GPT to get you more clients and, at the but, and your freedom to have your, you, I don't know how much of your own unique vibe, your goal is and I will of how this is set up, but this is in my opinion, too dark black shirt on black background, 
darker hair, you disappear. I'll tell you how to get my top three. You could probably really pop if you had a hair light. Um, and you could search that later, which would then at least outline you, make you more distinct. And then it could be camera settings as well as just lighting source. But like, to be honest, if I'm just spitting in and we always are, you know, as coaches, unless your vibe is to go more kind of like goth, this looks like a, like a mis mystery crime show review lighting or like a, a horror film review kind of lighting. It's not super inviting and lighting dynamics can have a lot to do with re retention. Now, I re again, I, all I hope you really quick tips. I you. really do think that lighting and set are, there's some distinctions here. There's like that can make this pop a lot more, make it a little bit more vi visually appealing. And then similarly, some of the photography for the thumbnails, because the, the lighting on you is, flat this is a little bit better and i think even just the lipstick color there a little bit more color the larger shot there some of these other shots kind of have a flat uh coolerness to them so warming it up brightening it up if that's on brand for you that can absolutely lead to are you strong because as a communicator it seems like you're an incredibly good communicator. You're very clear. Dealing with video marketing and not seeing success. Good hook. Stick around because I'm going to go over some mistakes not to make that you may be making. The, the framing reason. is a little off for me as well, Sean. Like the, yeah. what's happening in the top third of the um, of the frame? Why 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 are you kind of like down here? It feels a little odd. That's a great point. Yeah, you're you were just doing that. You're you're a little bit down and and to the and off to the side. For, for me, it would be similar, like my goal in kind of a perfect centered frame, a little bit closer to the top of the frame here. Mm. If I was over, if I was down here, this might be a little bit of a stranger framing. And so um, just a few small tweaks that I think you could make there that um, you're clearly uh, smart and, and get great results at at marketing in these different areas. And, and I think that would be a big takeaway that I'd recommend for everybody. You know, Ashley here is already getting some great results. Her channel hasn't really blown up, but she seems to be getting results on Facebook ads and other places. Lean into your strength. And one of the things we've been talking about as we've been doing this challenge and everything is like, it's really not, uh, the measure of success is not virality or subscribers necessarily, depending on what your business model is. So if you're one of the top EXP agents and I looked it up. I think there's like, they, they do like 3% of all the real estate transactions in America or something. So leaning into that genius zone, um, I think one of the things that makes us afraid is uh, niching down too much or being too in too narrow of a niche or wanting to go more broad or thinking I could help people with marketing in general. But you don't want to be a wandering generality. You want to be a meaningful specific. So you probably could be one of the top marketers, video marketer experts for EXP. You could go even deeper there. And then if, and to your point, I would maybe eliminate the YouTube strategies and talk. And then you could even go result, like results, like online marketing tips for getting more leads and customers in your real estate business. You just became so clear and become like the number one. And already I, it would seem that your business is doing good uh, or, you know, you've got these other income flows. So your measurement of success is in a silver play button. It is just more of the right people, you know, following your course and in your content. And, you know, as a reminder, uh, as you all know, we just for a limited time opened the doors to uh, vrafam.com and our YouTube niche finder course is a deep dive course about getting this right. That is a big deal as far as, uh, branding, positioning, business model. And the mistake a lot of people make is only trying to, again, get a bunch of subscribers and maybe going more broad appeal. I don't know if you feel like, like it does feel that Rob was kind of addressing that. Like you're kind of going a little bit more broad appeal, maybe, maybe afraid to niche down. I actually think there'd be a lot of power in uh, niching down as it pertains to that. So as a reminder, check that out. And of course, we've got all of that in the description down below. Next up, Rob, is simple smoothie. Excited about different channels, different types of topics. Smash like if you're learning something today. 14 subscribers, 12 videos. I wanna make one point right up front as I was looking at this. Um, 
brand new channel joined may well channel has been out since 2013 but newer videos it looks like just shorts i believe just shorts so just started posting but here's what's kind of interesting about youtube shorts with only 14 subscribers we have had as many as 1200 views nice very nice so and also smoothies very passionate topic interested topic the algorithm can understand it clear title pineapple banana smoothie bowl so that kind of cool to see with a total of 11 total shorts so far on Simple Smoothie. What are your thoughts, Rob? As you say, Sean, to be hitting triple digits on all videos right out of the gate is fantastic. I would not worry about the subscribers at, for, the, for the time being. The subscribers will come. And obviously, with the somewhat enormous challenge of hitting 10 million shorts views, in three months for monetization, that's not something to, to worry about right now. Just having this reach already and the consistency, like you started with 50 views and then incrementally, every is this most popular or? Yeah, it's um, most popular. It's, okay, it's most, so it's most popular, but um, like, yeah, every single video seems to be getting 400 views or above, which is really strong and consistent. What I am seeing is a simplistic approach to titles, which are literally the flavor of the smoothie, not even how to, not how long it's going to take, not mo how much it costs, anything. It is literally the flavor of a smoothie with some hashtags. I don't know if that is the right strategy in the long term to create intrigue in the um, videos. We probably need to watch one of the shorts to really see what's going on. Is it literally just a how to on how to make it or is there something visually satisfying? Okay. So they're taking advantage of YouTube's um, off the popular music. Hopefully, we're all right. Yeah, they're taking advantage of YouTube's music options so they can take popular music and put it in their own shorts. I think that's a good approach. Uh, that would mean that there's no voiceover. Um, I don't know. Could you add some more uh, burned-in captions to help um, with the um, with the story or the the, the, the tutorial here? Um, but as as I say, Sean, like we're what we're ten videos into this creator's journey, and they're all, they're off to a great start. Yeah. So this is all. I'm not going to turn the audio on because this is all popular songs, basically no voice. the The text on screen is the title of what it is. I was wondering how they got the text on screen and all the thumbnails, and the reason why is because they just leave it up the entire time because you can't mm. select a custom thumbnail. So. Um, whether that's good or bad, it is nice because I'm like, oh, I'd love to have the promise of the video text on the actual thumbnail. Um, and I agree with that. I think there's three massive uh, takeaways you can get from this. Um, and one is powering up the titles and topics. How could you be maybe a little bit more unique? And so just echoing Rob, um, under three minutes or super simple or with some kind of random ingredient, a little more clarity. Um, it also could be themed. I think if you did, you started thinking about trends, that's how you could go viral. You could think about themes of the year. If it was a fall smoothie and it had kind of a, a leaves around it, a spring smoothie, you put some flowers, an Easter smoothie, there's Easter lilies around. Like it just might really be shared. Cause like, oh, that looks so cool. When you're at, you ask yourself a question with vertical video, is this shareable? Would this be easy to share? Would this be broad appeal? Would there be reach around this? And then I would agree, voiceover. A lot more engaging if you're like, so this healthy green smoothie and maybe a little education on it. It's like, this healthy green smoothie will fight detoxification, you know, detox your body, give you more energy, and ultimately it tastes delicious. What you're gonna do is you put in your pineapples, um, such and such cups, put in half a cup of spinach, I use silk almond milk. You could use other almond milk. Blur it, you know, blend it up with my Ninja. If you actually are interested in checking out this Ninja uh, blender, I've pinned a, a link in the comments, and I've also put it in the description as well. If you're if you want to check it out, I love it, and it makes a tasty green smoothie. By the way, that was a little affiliate strategy on short, <laughs> which I was talking to Kyle Anderson on our team too. There is we use Genius Links. And there's one of our shorts that has driven an insane amount of affiliate sales, which is shocking to me because it's kind of hard to get to the description. It is, but it yeah, is a lot of friction. Yeah, it's it is possible. And so taking this video voiceover, you know, thinking through it. And 
you know, one of the other things that could be fascinating is based on your workflow, because if you're building this out in the YouTube shorts creator, which I imagine you are tying this music in, that's cool. But based on your workflow, if you can download the video or edit the video and get it before the music is done, like this is how uh, my workflow has been these days is like, I sometimes will build out a reel in Instagram and I'll get it to its final stage, maybe with Instagram's captions. I've edited through it. If I've used the green screen feature and I click save video and then the video is on my phone, no music. Then I use Instagram's feature to pick a popular song and I post a reel. I fill out the caption, put the hashtags on there or whatever. Then I take that video that's on my phone now edited with a caption overlaid and no music. And I take it over to YouTube shorts. I click plus at the bottom, add a YouTube short and I connect popular music. And then my optimization process is description, pin comment. Then I take it over to TikTok and I upload it there and pick a thumbnail out on TikTok, one of the frames, put the text on screen, type in the caption there and I upload it as well. And so if on your workflow with vertical video, um, you think through some of that stuff, it can be a big deal. And, and as a reminder, that's also why we just uh, also finished up our um, our YouTube Shorts Masterclass. You can just see it up here next to the AI for YouTube. Um, and that's like a two hour training actually, where we talk all about not just YouTube Shorts, but we also are talking all about vertical video in general, because when your workflow is dialed in and when your strategy is dialed in, the opportunity of posting on multiple different platforms with your vertical video assets, because I, you know, you know that Rob and I are in love with, of course, YouTube, that is your home base. That's where the long-term opportunity is. Eventually long form content is something we'd encourage you to get into. But ultimately when you think about, um, these assets, maybe you start going viral on TikTok. Maybe you start getting a lot of reach on Instagram Reels. Maybe Facebook Reels become interesting for you and you're creating the assets anyways. A few tweaks in your workflow can create that leverage for you. I just want to add um, a correction, uh, Sean. Uh, you can now um, choose a custom frame from a YouTube short to act as your thumbnail. That's if you go through... Um, the mobile app on Android or iOS. So you, you film it, you get to the video details, and then there's a pencil icon. You can literally go frame by frame and choose a choose a custom thumbnail. So they're slowly rolling out more functionality to shorts, which is good to hear. So I uh, I'm going to make sure, uh, based on Rob's advice here, that I'm going to go in. I am updating my YouTube app. It is updated, and I'm going to I'll confirm. Last time I checked, it didn't work for me. I don't know if it's rolled out to everybody. And I'm clicking up is I'm clicking up in the upper hand left, like will this open up with this? And so we'll see. Uh, in fact, Rob, uh, I realized what I could do is I can go to create short right now. Yeah, we can. And yeah. I can Live demonstration, folks. I'm going to upload this video that I did Fingers yesterday of, of my son. And I'm just going to call that good enough and not add a sound. And I'm going to go next. This is the latest version of the YouTube app. And there is a pencil icon. Well, there sure you go. Enough. There you so, go. So, okay, great. So on iOS, we can go custom frame, which would also, as you're editing your very YouTube short, maybe you put text on the end that you know is, is going to be on there. Maybe there's not, maybe you don't want text. Um, the old hack was literally like the last frame or something was actually like a Photoshopped file. And yeah. you use, I don't yeah. even think that's actually necessary, but I do think the framing, maybe text, um, that's an amazing insight. Smash like for Rob dropping the pencil, YouTube short thumbnail. We are out here. You got to just press on think media podcast. And we're going through some of your channels and today's stream is brought to you by vidIQ. Um, Rob, there is a new feature on vidIQ and we've got a bunch of more channels to go through a lot of more tactics to share with y'all. But I am so pumped because vidIQ is one of the tools we use every day here at Think Media. Uh, keyword research, daily. Yesterday, we were going through daily ideas tool, planning out some of the niche specific videos for our channel. And I was so inspired because I was like, man, this is so fast. 
given us a lot of recommendations around the Sony ZV-E10, um, which we had not only have videos in the past on that, but that is a hot camera and some angles on it. So that was just the daily ideas tool, but there's a new tool. I'm going to share your screen and break this down for us. Yeah. So as we all know, AI is a big topic of conversation. We already have our AI coach where you can just basically have a conversation uh, with a YouTube AI coach and it can give you certain suggestions on like how to grow your channel, do a content schedule and such. But now we're taking that to the next level with our AI content generator. And to find it, you just go to vidiq.com forward slash generate. The best news is right now it is completely free. Uh, so you can check it out. And the reason for that is because it's currently in beta. We're still testing it out. So we'd love feedback on it. And I'm describing this as version 0 0.1 of the only YouTube tool you will ever need in the future. So what we have here is simple text bar. And we can type something in. I'm just going to use something very simple. I'll try crypto. And uh, what that should do is generate in around about five to 10 seconds a intriguing click worthy title the future of cryptocurrency got a comprehensive guide i'd say as a starting point from just a single word that's not too bad we're already going to provide you a description we're going to give you effective keywords that you might want to use if you are still interested in tagging your videos and then perhaps some demonstrations of some thumbnails now this is where sometimes it does need a little bit of tweaking because i don't know if those thumbnails as backgrounds would be useful for cryptocurrency but we were testing it earlier on today and we tried minecraft and it was bringing very effective um, minecraft backgrounds that we could use um so thumbnails do need a little bit of work and we're not saying that you should use these as your final thumbnails These should be used as backgrounds you know blur of the image something along those lines but on top of that we are providing a video script can you download those thumbnails? You certainly can, yes. Yeah. So I would just click on this and then I could download the thumbnail if I wanted to. And then you um, could throw that in Canva or Photoshop or PicMonkey yeah. or something and then add yourself to it or just go a little bit deeper. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And also we do a video script. So we, we've got a video script here. Now this may be your intro or it could be something for a YouTube short and it even provides a voiceover of that uh, script. As I say, all of this is going to leap forward tremendously in the next three to six months. This is the worst version you're seeing right now. And already for, a, for a, a comprehensive tool that just required one word to generate all of this in 15 to 20 seconds, I'm really excited about it, Sean. And we're looking to really work on this tool going forward as part of our VidIQ tool set, which of course is free. And then if you want to try more of our tools, uh, there is the... Um, Fantastic offer that um, Think uh, Media have, which I think is what, 98% off, $1 for 30 days. Definitely worth yes. checking out. And so, and then what is that URL again for that free so, tool? vidiq.com forward slash generate. And it's completely free. You don't even need to log in to test it out. So we'd really appreciate, appreciate your feedback. Awesome. So I'm dropping that in the chat on the YouTube live stream, vidiq.com forward slash generate. And uh, you can check that out right there on screen as well. Super cool. Um, I'm going to type in camera review. And I'm over here. The ultimate camera review. Everything you need to know. We got our tags. Right. We got no, our description. Cool. We got our thumbnail background right there. We got another one coming. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. That's not too bad, is it? Okay. Add a bit of text in the, some of the negative space there. Yeah, maybe cut off this little like side lens thing mm -hmm. um, and and edit it a little. But that's, yeah, nice and crispy. So that's cool. What a cool tool to play around with. And so again, that's vidiq.com forward slash generate. That's entirely free. And then also, um, if you want to check out the 30-day trial of vidiq's paid plan with all the cool features, vidiq.com forward slash think. Links in the show notes and smash like if you're getting value. This is the Think Media Podcast channel. My name is Sean Cannell. We are going through channels from our uh, Video Raked Academy group. Um, and we are, if you're just joining though, there's gonna be a lot of insights to be asking, how can you apply this to your content? What are some things that you could do to get better on your next upload? Or maybe some mistakes that you're making on your channel 
that you can learn from. Our next channel is Soft Landings UK, which is a travel consultancy. We do not have a channel banner here. Um, so that's not just me scrolled down. That's just a note. Um, and so that is an opportunity to upload one. Um, Nigeria is where we're located, it appears. Travel consultancy is the full description. So I think, you know, one of the reasons why we encourage filling out the description is one, there's now a new 50 characters of text or so that is sort of like the tagline for your channel right underneath your handle. But two, when you take the time to actually fill out your description and to sit down and write who you are, what's the promise of your channel, who's it for, what can people expect? The biggest power of doing that is clarity for yourself. It's putting like your ideas on paper, your vision on paper, your goals on paper. It's not that a lot of people necessarily stop by the about page, although some could. It's that the clarity that you will gain from the process will mm -hmm. improve your channel in the process. So we've got full length videos about seven of them and we're doing a lot more shorts and let's check out one of these five jobs to get as a student or new arrival to the uk now for many of us when we've just come into the uk job searching is a really difficult task you know you spend a lot of time going left and right um the jobs are um i like the topic i think that this is a good short, it's clear, it's a clear promise. What I don't love is this idea of the top five jo jobs top five. for UK students and new arrivals, full video on YouTube. Mm. It's done yeah. is better than perfect, I think, and, and experimenting is always good. But one of the biggest mistakes I've noticed, I th you know, people make with shorts is thinking that their promotions or commercials for other videos. The way I think you should use shorts is they should be standalone. The chance of even actually getting someone from a short to another video, the fact that it's just so small, it's like, it's not that it can't be done. If there is a full length video, you should pin it in the comments. You could put it in the description. You could try to do an end card. I don't know if they still allow that, but you could put an end card on there. But people's behavior in shorts is typically that they want to stay in shorts and they want to swipe through there. If a short grips them, they go, this channel is interesting. I want to dig deeper into this channel. And they decide to look into your, like that's up to them. But 99% of the time, I think using a short as a commercial or just, if it's cut out of a video, just make sure the content stands alone and fully delivers value in the short itself as opposed to is just like a, a commercial or a trailer. In my opinion, that is not how to use shorts. Let's go to the full, here's the full video so we can see Top the crop. five jobs to get assist. Which as an asset, I love the fact that you're chopping this video up. My goal would just be to say, is there a 60 second version where you just talk about like security jobs and that is its own short and you're able to efficiently edit that down um, and, and turn it into a short that stands alone. Uh, I see that probably your framing on this was so that you could crop in, which is a, a kind of a cool idea. Maybe you shot it in 4K. Um, it's the final outputs 1080p, but that allows you to crop in and gives you the short editing later. I think that is smart. It's a smart workflow to consider. Security is such a huge sector in the UK and security is required for all. Very practical, good tips here. And, um, good production and 149 views is is kind of cool to see so rob what are your thoughts when i was um, watching the short uh sean uh, i was thinking about uh, attention span oh, because uh viewers on shorts are ruthless because all i need to do as you demonstrate sean is to say next 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 and i think the title was top five jobs in the uk and we were about 15 seconds in and we hadn't got to any of the jobs. And so I'm thinking in the short, no preamble, just give me it straight away. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, 25 seconds. Let's move on to the next short. Uh, now, I had the disconnect of Soft Landings UK, travel consultancy and the content until I think the very first sentences of the video itself, which then taught me, ah, this is for um foreign um 
foreign visitors who are landing in UK for the first time and looking to stay there on a permanent basis and are looking for jobs and how to establish themselves. So how do you turn that into, as you've used yourself, Sean, the, the term North Star, how do you turn that into your North Star description for your channel, which then can also become your channel banner? And then I was just looking at the uh, quality of a video as well. I didn't see any um, B-roll uh, from the brief parts of a video that we saw about top five jobs. And I was just wondering how much editing has gone into the content post filming. Oh, and I wasn't sure. Because if it's just this person talking into a camera at the well, same... Well, quite a bit. There's a zoom in, there's an emoji. Okay, right. So that's a good point. So you could pull a ton of B-roll or still photos that are animated to, to actually illustrate food delivery, parcel, temporary job apps. You're absolutely right. This this could 100% benefit from B-roll. Go on. So yeah, just looking at the timeline, it looks, it looks as if it was two, two camera uh, talking head. And again, viewers like pattern interrupts, something changing, whether it's sounds, image, and so on. The creator looks confident in front of camera. I think they they have a knowledge span, and they, and they have a very unique value proposition. Uh, they're probably one of only a few thousand people who've landed in the UK and have this knowledge and experience, and they're just one of maybe a dozen people who are actually sharing their knowledge and message on YouTube. So I think you should really tap into that value proposition so that people can easily find you when they're searching for, uh, for solutions on YouTube and they you come up as one of the top search results. Yeah, that's brilliant. And um, I think that ultimately uh, all of your wisdom there related to B-roll is one of the biggest things we can learn from. Now, this sounds intense when it comes to editing, but... They usually say you want to switch the frame up every three seconds, mm. max seven. So kind of three to seven seconds. Switching the frame up could be as simple as this would be a frame switch. That's just kind of a reset of attention. Perhaps in a live stream like this, it could be, you know, putting something on the screen, which if it's like, and hey, by the way, you get a 30 day trial of vidIQ's paid plan. Maybe better than that, though, even would be the tips and so when i'm doing a live stream i like to sometimes if i've got 10 tips i put the numbers up and it gives some somebody something to see we bring rob up make him bigger or smaller this would just be live streaming kind of ways of resetting attention but if you're editing you've got the benefit of especially in such a linear that you could use story blocks or there's probably free creative commons stuff these days or unsplash.com to get um you know even just some free uh photos i mean i wonder food delivery so there's other sites like free stock photography and you could just animate photos and so you could go like food delivery just interesting thought i mean that's unsplash plus so that's actually going to cost you but let's see you know that's that looks like food delivery in the uk it's raining <laughs> you know, it reminds, reminds me of Seattle. so yeah you like you could you could take this photo download it free for commercial use or for your videos throw that into your editor give it some slight animation um and there's this is just one example and there's other things like that and then there are some paid stock video sites and so those things could absolutely increase retention and i don't i also want to encourage you to not be overwhelmed everybody watching this or if you're here live or on the replay because um I know three to seven second edits, learning editing can be overwhelming, but remember we're just getting 1% better with every upload. So um, if you could just get a little bit more content, a little bit more B-roll, a little bit more of camera angles changing or think cool things happening on the screen, um, every upload we can get a little bit better. And then some days, eventually our goal here at Think Media Podcast and Think Media is to get you to the place where you can maybe hire an editor if that's not your passion. It is actually some people's passion. Um, and uh, some great tips there. All right, we've got Mr. and Mrs. Beefcake coming up in just a second. But people were asking, Sean, how are you doing channel reviews? And these are actually coming from our VRA group. So we're not doing any open channel reviews right now. We've got a bunch queued up. Um, they're from our private Facebook group of our uh, Video Ranking Academy community. However, I highly recommend uh, learning from all of the insights here. And we've been getting some great feedback. Um, thank you, Mrs. Lorda. 
watching and learning. Rob and Sean are the best. What a great collaboration. Saltwater Heart Studio appreciates you being here. And um, we're going to keep it moving. But if you've already learned something, Gabriel saying great feedback. One of our favorite things is aha moments because there's something about writing down the insights that you're learning, sharing them with others. Aha moments are one of our favorite thing because my question for you is what are you applying to your channel so you can improve your next video? Next up is Mr. and Mrs. Beefcake. Smash like if you're learning something today. We've got 15 uploads, 22 new subscribers, 14,000 views. This is a weekly lifestyle and entertainment videos. They do weekly shorts and sneak peeks and funny behind the scenes bloopers. They are in the United Kingdom. Here are the shorts and our video topics, excuse me, are things like, looks like eating food. Yep, eating food together, um, testing out a, an electric toothbrush, trying, doing a hot sauce Hello everyone sauce and welcome challenge. back. Kind of like hot ones on their own. They got a little milk there, a hot sauce challenge. Got some wings or some chicken nuggets to try those on. A lot of food stuff. Air fryer unboxing. Let's you check out a little bit of this and then we'll give our feedback. Meal. What can I do? Ah, I have got a solution. Whoa. <laughs> check this out. <laughs> Wow. So we did a thing. I like that your bumper was short. Mm. Did. Logo um, sting, if any, was like two seconds. Mm -hmm. We thought we'd jump on the hype and basically buy an air fryer because so many. Um, my production thoughts are are. It would, I, I'm guessing we're going on camera audio and then the camera is on the other side of the, what do you call the kitchen things? Call them the counter counter, but what do you call them in the middle? The land the island, an island. Like I think the camera and the tripod is on the other side of the island. And so where we can kind of hear you, it's a little bit faint. Uh, really hard to and these stuff. days, you know, some of the options we have is uh wireless mic dslr um and you could get these dual ones and the ones that we've talked about on think media um let me find this for you because yeah here you go like something like these there's cheaper ones than these but with two of you you could go this plugs into your mic jack assuming you have a mic jack so that's obviously or there is the one that's trrs that will plug into your smartphone and then there's two little clip on mics to have two guests or it'd be perfect for you guys. And so to the tune of forty nine ninety five, um, you can invest in microphones like this. They're becoming much more common. And uh, I'll drop a link for anybody that wants to check that out. But Rob, what is your thoughts on Mr. and Mrs. Beefcake? First of all, full credit for doing oh, okay. videos with your partner if ever i tried to do anything with this like with my wife we would fall out even before the splash intro screen it just it's just not going to work for us so uh yeah gravity are doing something together as a uh, as a as a team when i was looking at the content itself uh sean it looked as if it was a little all over the place it Felt like they were creating content for their own entertainment and indulgement because we had some food challenges, we had some um, makeup um, stuff. You know what it almost feels like? They've gone through their subscription list of all of their favorite creators and thought, oh, this looks cool, this looks funny, let's do this ourselves on our channel. And that would be great if you were a well-established um, team with a big following who would watch whatever type of content you're going to be throwing out on YouTube. But in terms of a content strategy for a smaller channel, you know, we're going to use that term again. Niching down might be a bit of an idea here. And also, I'm looking at some of the challenges and the reviews, and I'm thinking, were those popular six months ago, 12 months ago, 
Are they still popular now? I'm not entirely sure. I think also if you are going to do these challenges and reviews, and I think you mentioned in one of these that you were jumping on the trend of air fries. That's fine. Uh, what else could you do that's really trending right now? But those are my first observations uh, on the channel, Sean. Um, did you just sort by most popular then and have been on the channel? I for did, like and and I think years? that that it just goes deeper in what you're suggesting, Rob. We could introduce some channel confusion here because I wouldn't be surprised if this video is maybe still generating some subscribers or some awareness. Right, yeah, 27,000 um, views. And maybe not because I don't see any VPH, but there's VPH, but there could be. You've still got some of the biggest videos on some Gymshark clothes. Looks like this stuff did pretty good when you were doing the fitness stuff, physique update. And then some of these kind of cut in, but we definitely went a new direction. Now, you may just be able to ignore these if they're not causing you current growth, but one of the most painful pills to swallow for people that have had established YouTube channels that they've experimented a lot with, as you know, Rob, is if you have videos bringing you awareness and subscribers and viewers that aren't interested in your newest content, yep. probably make those private or unlisted. And even though it's like, oh, but they're actually getting me reach and they're getting me growth. The question is, where are you going now? What kind of content are you creating now? Just a thought. And um, we are seeing, you know, a year ago, we had fiance reacts to Eastern European food. Uh, to, to take a step back, and we have so many though, like fitness videos that seem to be the best videos. Mind you, that was a six or seven years time to accumulate the views. But I mean, maybe it got bored or... All that to say is to take a step back, I think we see what you're doing here. You know, like we all can maybe see that there are this idea of entertainment YouTube channels, which they have stated that, Rob. I mean, that's the thing that they also yep. say. Definitely They're like, true. Yep. this is lifestyle and entertainment videos. I think the problem with that is that's it can be hard to break through. And so you want to just be aware of the mountain you're climbing and the battle you're fighting. You're going for um, mass appeal. Um, you you have to you want to be self aware in terms of your charisma levels, your your humor levels, uh, your ability to to think through some of that stuff. And then what I would argue too is I think that the production value. The channel, if you're new here, I'm Alex. Like uh, uh, to give you some hardcore coaching, <laughs> this tilted angle. <laughs> yes. Yeah. With the echoey audio. Uh, we are Mr. and Mrs. BK. Today we are making a... And with with the opening shot that doesn't even actually hook. Like if, if this this should open up and it should go like... Hot Hello, water. everyone. Well it should go... And there should be like sweat beads on like someone's forehead. And music should be like... Dun, 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 dun. And then there should be some drama and some tension between you. And it, what is this? I mean, this is just a, it seems to be a cooking video, but you should be, there should be conflict. You guys were fighting over putting the ingredients in, in the wrong order. If it's entertainment, if it's also just a practical cooking video, even still, it should hook like showing the final product, showing some of the ingredients, getting people pumped, maybe cut out your intro all together. And we're like, today we're cooking a, the dream dessert. It's a gluten-free lactose free, no bake lemon cheesecake. Let's get into it. And and just get straight into it. Production value, editing, sound quality. And you hear me say a lot that, you know, it's the content value that matters, not the production value. That's based on the industry because we help so many people that if your promise is eight things not to say when buying a home, the person watching that doesn't care about the production value. They just want the value of the content. But if you're saying I'm planting my flag in entertainment, then Netflix is entertainment. Hulu is entertainment. I'm not saying you have to go to that level, but like lighting, sound, editing, music, quality of the audio. What are you competing with? You know, I think another opportunity that you would have if we go deeper in this, Rob, is reactions. And uh, reaction videos is just a hot niche. It can be crowded, but there's just massive opportunity there. But if you look at the quality of the best reaction channels, the cuts, the quickness of it, the it's 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 a pretty high level of editing it's a pretty high level of and that could all feel a little bit overwhelming but all that to say is if you're committed to going deep 
inside of this, um, let's let's uh, let's just check out this. What time is it? You can't wear a suit and a bow tie and scream at people. It makes me feel something I've never felt before. <laughs> what do you think of when I say limp biscuit? A biscuit with a lint. So we have incredibly bright, colorful outfits, good lighting, blue background, quick editing, stuff comes in. And and we're then we also reacting to something that is trend surfing and influence surfing at a high level. Um, and then you have multiple guests and whatnot. So just as far as aspirational wise, I two things as we land the plane and any final thoughts, Rob. Number one, I would I talk most of our creators out of this because meanwhile, there's a practical path of kind of making like picking a niche, making kind of more search based, of course, tapping into suggested, doing some affiliate marketing and earning an extra one, two, three, four, five K a month and like and riding off onto the sunset and maybe never being famous. Flip side is you guys go a whole nother level and you, you say, no, entertainment is the dream. And we want to be like some of the biggest entertainers. You think about branding, marketing, photography, editing, quality, set, sound, and you take one step at a time, but you lean into those things to compete compete with the expectation of other entertainment content out there. Rob, thoughts? Sean, when you saw it um, by most popular on a channel, I did see one common thread of recent videos, and you touched on this, partner reacts to. Now, it's Eastern European food, it's British snacks. That could be their guiding flagship series. So they can experiment with all of these other types of videos, but I think every other video should be going back to this root content, which seems to work. And again, is that TV tilted? Like, yeah, driving, I mean, it's driving me. We got to get the shot level. <laughs> we got to hide the cords. The, the radiator cords looks like it's out. level. The this radiator looks like it's level. So the I think I think silly. there's multiple accesses off right now. I think the TV <laughs> might it's either the TV's off or the camera's slightly off or and then and then the audio is just the on camera audio there's an echo. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Yeah. In today's video we In are In this doing... particular situation, I'll link up another video for you that uh that could make this sound great is you get a little boom pole. This could be very affordable. Um you get a little boom pole, a little shotgun microphone, a longer cable. And again, we might be dealing with a no, no microphone jack, which by the way, that's going to be one of your investments would be maybe a camera, or you can always do an external audio recorder and then you have to sync in editing. But, uh, I think that the two of you sitting down like that, um, let me see here. Shotgun mic hack, think media. Here we go. The fifteen dollar boom might hack. Now get into it. You already have just press record. Hey, my name is. Mark. Well, let's check this Today, out. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up your shotgun microphone on a boom pole to get the best audio for your YouTube videos. Let's get into it. So that right there. See how it's it, you get the boom pole is like twelve bucks. The cable is like five, and that's it. And then you plug it into you or your shotgun microphone, screw it on the end. And so, um, I'll I'll share a link to this video as Rob gives his final thoughts, but improving the audio here is possible. One other thing you're dealing with, and I'm empathetic, it seems like you probably have a square footage issue. Mm, a lot of us yeah, do. Good point. Because you're backed up against the wall, and and that could one thing that can help with that is a wide angle lens or some kind of a wide angle lens, or just being thoughtful about how you arrange and set up your shots. Uh, I know I've talked about this multiple times, but like as we go through these things, that is actually what our video creation made simple workshop is all about. So that's the last time we're ever doing that live where Nolan is like literally everybody uh, that joins is gonna be getting coached, talking about how to set up your shot, how to uh, take advantage of of uh, maximizing small rooms, small spaces. And so uh, it, it does look like they're kind of editing in little meme oh, clips. Was that multiple angle last just saw that shot? I think they were using two cameras. Just, I th yeah. So I think they need to do a bit more. That's that's cool. The fact that they've already got a multi-camera system going on. Even I don't do that. Really? I could imagine that being like an editing nightmare, but to be doing that already on content. 
And one of the things that about this angle, I agree. I like the second angle, but I feel like more jump cuts, a little faster. Yeah. Or yeah. like during this time, some ultra big zooms in. Like you mm -hmm. zoom in, you you fast zoom into his squinty face, which is hilarious. You do a sound that's effect a thumbnail as right there that. as well. Yeah, it's that's a really great thumbnail. And you maybe outline her, you get her closer. But yeah, you could have like fire coming out of his head or electricity. And understanding this, like that the editing it would take to maybe get some animated cartoons around him or little gifts you put in, even on a basic beginner level, it's going to take a lot of time. But let's also think about the reward on the other side. You step into the next level of caliber here, and now we're talking about 10,000, 25,000, 50,000 views. Now we're talking about ad revenue. Now we're talking about brand deals. And so just with a big encouragement, I know that was a lot, and I, and I appreciate you submitting your channel for us to be ruthless, as you said, Rob. Uh, but we want you and our whole community to get better. And, and some of those tools like the microphone, maybe being thoughtful about the shot, thoughtful about the editing, and really good unlock, success leaves clues. And so good unlock seeing in some of your popular videos. The question for everybody watching is, what trends in your popular videos could you double down on and it is wife reacts, wife reacts, fiance reacts. And like you said, every other of those and maybe getting that show format dialed in um, a little bit. Whew, we are dropping. We're, we're at the top of the hour. We're going to be going a little bit longer. We have a few more channels to go here. Uh, as a reminder, today's stream is brought to you by vidiq.com forward slash think. Uh, check out the link in the description down below. A powerful suite of tools for helping you making better uh for helping you make better data driven insights be better data driven decisions rob just like you i got up at 7 a.m to do a podcast with uh somebody in singapore and oh. that was an hour and a half i did a coaching call with like a one-on-one -on -one client what else did i do and i'm here with you i laid down my wife said are you sick i said i'm tired and uh, and now we're here, but I'm grateful, and and nobody cares about my pain or your pain. Rob's been rise and grind. It's rise and grind, man. Uh, get 30 day trial of VidIQ's paid plan for one dollar. It's an awesome suite of tools. Check out the description down below, and uh, super fired up for that. Um, next up, Rob, is the watercolor classroom. We have seven thousand subscribers, eighty five nice. videos. We have. 206,000 views. You can paint. Yes, you can paint. Come learn how. I love the title. Yeah, I like that. Because Simple. it's very clear what it is, and it's clear that it's Becky. And let's see what's happening on our stats. Six uploads, 70 new subscribers, almost 5,000 views. She did a poll a year ago. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Good, though. But let's get back to using that community tab because your last poll was a year ago. You can post in the community tab once a day, up to two, three times a day, I think is fine. And so why not? Um, we do have some shorts and that's exciting to see. I like the aesthetic. You're, you're great. We're on music. I'm gonna mute it though. Wow. Looks beautiful. The Very tone. talented. Yeah. We'll come back to that in a second and then let's hit these uh let's hit the main videos here best wash brushes water control fixing mistakes and a whole series on classes three of eight that's an interesting strategy with the same thumbnail but it ties it all together it's kind of like a free course building out one result so that's interesting rob what are your thoughts so in terms of this class, what was it? Eight lessons. Uh, I just want to see the view counts on these because it looked like it was a, a situation of diminishing returns. Like the, the first couple of videos got more views and then slightly less as it progressively went on. I don't know, Sean, considering that some of these videos are like three minutes long, seven minutes long, would it be better to put this into like an hour long uh, video? And the only reason I ask that is because typically speaking, um, on YouTube, you want to get the whole meal in one course as opposed to having to watch it over several weeks in this case, I believe. Uh, I don't know if there are like 
learnings at the end of it. Like, so you're up to this point in in the video and you'll be able to do this and master it by next week. And then we'll carry on to the next lesson. I mean, again, the, the art, the artwork here is, I mean, is that actually a drawing or a, or a photograph? I think that's the photo. And then that's what they're working right, on. Okay. But nevertheless, okay. like, yeah, that's wild. You know, to kind of spin off your idea here too. And I don't think I've ever shared this before in a context like this. So this is, this could be a kind of powerful opportunity. I think what some people do is you'd be shocked when someone wants to learn the depth of what you've learned here. To Rob's point, it probably would be more effective to put out this first video and then actually invite people to an opt-in or even a pay paywall. Yeah. Um, that's because a option. I agree. if if it ended up being 167 and let's cut that number down to let's just say 25 percent of 200 so what is that 50 let's say 50 people saw the first video and they were like oh this is cool i would love to i would love to check you know that out more um and they get to self-select so it doesn't fill the channel up rather than give the videos away free if you will at this size of channel you have 50 people that take this class for $15 and you generate $750 for a lot of people in the creator economy, people that are trying to get YouTube ad revenue. It's going to take you a long time to build up to that. You're not going to get anywhere near that off the 5,000 views a month you're getting. But yet I would, I would believe that within your community that wants to go deeper, the opportunity of learning deeper, if you will, business skills or online marketing and creating great videos, serving the people that want the free content, but instead of, because it's, it's kind of a, in a way what Rob said too, it, it didn't even perform very good, but you still could have put out the great video, which got 500 views and it's a win, 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 win. So people get some free content, they get started, they can go in, it's not expensive. People are gonna pay that all day long too. If we shift our mindset, we go to this place in Las Vegas where you paint pottery with our son. Um, and now we, we, we did like their footprints on a Christmas ornament and then they, you know, put it in the oven and then we give it to grandma, my mom on Christmas of my baby's footprints. How cute is that? You know, we're, people are going to pay all day long for a, a $20 art class, a $40 art class. And so, um, that may be a skill set to learn, of course, to set that up. Where are you going to put it? It could it could just be YouTube channel memberships and you can have exclusive content back there as well. Um, it could be Patreon or it could be actually packaging some of that more advanced um, stuff. And this is where I think that a lot of people underestimate, quote unquote, their small channel. Now, it does have 7,000 subscribers, but like not a huge channel, how much potential income earning opportunities there could be existing right now if you're uh, thinking about it a little bit different what else are you thinking rob looking at the videos that followed on from that series the view counts are better so i think it does demonstrate like a, a bit of viewer fatigue on that series and you know again just laboring a little bit more on the point of the series the creator perhaps didn't know what to do with the thumbnails either because they were all identical with the exception of the part number one to eight so a viewer who's casually coming across these videos, maybe asking, have I already seen this video before? Or if it's they're seeing part seven, oh, do I have to watch the previous six parts of this video to, to mm. follow along with what's, what's happening there? Um, so I think more videos that stand on their own without having to be connected in this way. And I love the idea of, um, you know, I think those videos in total were probably generated about $7.50. But as you say, if you're able to send them from one video to a Skillshare, Udemy, and generate $750, that would be uh, much better. Now, in terms of the video style, uh, we've got the top-down view. I'm guessing there's narration going on here, Sean. Any music or just narration? Brush. Looks like just narration. Just narration. Okay. Washes within uh, painting. Given the video length, it All feels the like they're being clear and concise. You know, you're going to learn how to do something in less than four minutes. The drawing style that's pretty cool to me as well um i noticed they did shorts uh, sean I, I i was wondering if they get more traffic on their shorts because we saw that one time lapse video which looks pretty cool okay so 
consistent views, but nothing that's gone viral. Or is that the latest video we're seeing there? Both the late, latest and most popular oh, okay. is this filling in the background one. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yep. And, and, and yeah, it's actually kind of the same on both cases, but I think this is an inspiring channel in general. There's momentum, there's history, there's consistency. I think one of the opportunities of small tweaks leads to giant peaks. I do want to hit saltwater heart studio asks, can you pay wall videos be done on YouTube or do we have to go off platform? Two things. One, you can do it with channel memberships. So I believe on channel memberships, you basically can have like a separate community tab or what you do on the community tab is select. I only want my members to see this. You can have unlisted videos or videos that you give them and not the public. YouTube is also going to be creating tools so that you can essentially have your own pay to play content or kind of, kind of like online courses integrated with YouTube platform. Warning, warning, warning. These other features that YouTube does, they take 30%. Mm, so man, super chats, channel memberships. If you were to grow up your, imagine your channel members to like six figures a year because you really hustle and you're in creator economy, you build up momentum, a thousand true fans, whatever. And you really, you get six figures a year, 30%, they would take $30,000. Then you pay taxes and everything else. So in my opinion, there's better options. I do understand sometimes, you know, the benefit is people don't have to leave the platform. It's integrated right there, but 30% is, is gnarly. And so sometimes Patreon's like five to 10. Uh, my friend Daryl's working on another thing and there's other options out there. And then there's things where you have a pay a monthly payment, like a Kajabi or something where, um, they don't take anything, but you do have the expense of paying for it monthly. Uh, we we have some cool options. If you've never seen thinkmediatools.com, um, that's got some different things to use. But yeah, you could certainly keep it on YouTube, but I don't really recommend it. Um, great channel here, though. My favorite thumbnails, Rob, are these latest ones. I like the lighting, the daylight, the color, the simple amount of words. I think the bird with all the text, I understand that it's literally like a advertisement for like a class. It's like a flyer you would put up on the mm. cork board at a library, but like that's, it's not really YouTube best practices. Uh, I think that sometimes in the past here, there's more like that too many words. We don't need the watercolor classroom with your name. Um, all these extra texts, like the most recent ones, which it would seem that perhaps being in part inside of video rakey academy and whatnot they seem to be the most modern crispy clear and so keep that going and um this is a very inspiring channel i hope some of these tips added some value all right we're in the home stretch i'm excited for this channel rob um this is deluna and she has a harp channel nice i don't think i've ever audited a harp channel in five years and 6,000 channels. As we talk about production value, one, video-wise, I am inspired. Like, I want to be in this situation right now. Like, I am being transported. Where do you live? Because I'm coming over, <laughs> number one. Number two, will you play where I can just lay out on like a yoga mat and just listen? Three, for the fact that this is music and audio it appears to me that we only have left channel i am only getting left oh, really? channel audio right now have you noticed that rob uh it's coming through both of mine but i don't know if that's stream yards just outputting mono to both my ah it could be mono so i don't know if that's what other people are hearing but ultimately um just a thoughtful thing that perhaps there's some shotgun microphones that if you don't use a converter will only give you one channel and this one's both so it might, it might have just been that video i'm getting right and left here mm -hmm. beautiful man i just am so i i love i i think she's thoughtful to get how she got dressed for this where she's filming the shot composition um very cool let's hit uh, another one what's this Maybe some of her music with some B-roll. Perhaps she has some albums. So this may have been recorded in um, 
maybe more of a studio because the production seems a little higher. And then she put put that on uh, on there. And then let's see, we are we do have some shorts. We have got a popular song, Elvis. Makes sense. Can't help falling in love. Most viewed. Looks like she probably gets hired because she looks at some public place where maybe they have her there playing. Or that's a green screen. I can't tell about the dimension. Is she really there? I don't know. I think so, yeah. I, I, th there's some random person walking in and out of shot in the background. Yeah, cool. Um, okay, and uh, let's see. We've got 23,000 views, a spike recently. We've I've got 97 videos uploaded. DeLuna is on the grind. Like this is a rise and grind, DeLuna harps. And I'm wondering, that's probably quite a few shorts. I mean, could one day, two days, two days, three days, three days, three days, respect. Um, and then uh, quite a few shorts, I'm, I'm sure. So I love that hustle. And then, um, but it's also go for green. So using the way I can see this on someone else's channel is I've got vidIQ installed and then the vidIQ vision tool installed. And so go for green because green is good. If you could just keep doubling down and continually hitting green, that just means you're growing and uh, opportunity to do a little community tab stuff. We do have 347 videos posted though and only 350 subscribers. So we have almost, we're like, you have to upload a whole video to get a subscriber. It appeal, uh, appears at this current pace. So I definitely think there's some tweaks and opportunity here, but I want to hit one more thing before Rob drops his wisdom on us. Uh, she does have her website, so I'm curious to see we can discern a little bit of the business model here. And it looks like we've got uh, coaching. So you could do, there's a 12-week journey she's got. We've got testimonials, maybe people that have learned from her or hired her to play. You could do harp lessons. We could do CDs and downloads. So we have some music here. I wonder if this is, we have what, SoundCloud? Bandcamp, where we can buy her music. I do wonder how many albums are you selling? And this starts getting into strategy of, of uh, do you put on Spotify? Do you help educate people about that? Would it even make a dent in income because of the amount you, you get there? Activities for music services. So it's really cool. She has a pretty robust career and has moved on YouTube here to uh, get the word out and, and promote some things. So Rob, what are you seeing? Can you go back to the channel? I just want to see the titles for the videos. I think we, we've done enough about thumbnails, I think, in previous audits to say that thumbnails could do with a bit of work, especially with the text. But I'm just looking at the titles and I'm thinking, how can these be more accessible to a potential audience? And I'm thinking genre of music. For example, is there a way to insert into your titles uh, classic or relaxing, chill out, one of those buzzwords in terms of mood, followed by harp music, harp cover, et cetera, et cetera. And then also I'm thinking from a um, video and visual perspective, it was wonderful to um, listen to the music, but just watching somebody play the harp for four or five minutes, I need something maybe a bit more visually stimulating. So what I was thinking of, um, Sean, is maybe for the tune, they could do a bit of research behind how the tune was um, was scored or like who, or is there any interesting story about the composer? And also maybe this creator's own personal journey with this song. What, you know, what? how does it make them feel? Was it difficult for them to learn how to play in a, was it played at a wedding and did a funny story happen? I'm just trying to think of some, I don't, I, so I'm not saying voice narration. I don't want it to disrupt the music, but just like something to see visually, some text on screen, maybe just adding a bit more intrigue to the video itself. One other idea I have is leveraging your music. And uh, I think someone, if they were asking this, um, I want to contextualize these things because I think we can all learn from this. And Robert said, you know, can you help me with keeping this in context? If you're asking, you know, how does this apply to my channel, titles, thumbnails, strategy, and then business model. 
So being over here is saying, can you do coaching? Are, do you have music? Are you trying to get hired for weddings, special events, concerts? What is kind of the different business models or offers? Because some people focus, I think, too myopically just on YouTube ad revenue. Here's what I think is, again, fascinating. I'm guessing that you're not selling 5,000 albums a day. I'm also guessing that over here with these digital downloads, maybe some of these are, um, I mean, peaceful preparation for surgery. Like this is, this is 18 minutes. Is it, it's two songs. One is 18, one is 1824. Uh, this is awesome. And this is going to cost, okay, name your price. So it is free and it's, or you could buy all the discography for 4140, which is all great. Here's what, here's what I'm after. I think that a different content format on your channel is kind of like what you did with harp and B roll. But if you were to say like peaceful harp, um, sleep music. Yeah. 14 million views. Right? Yeah. And we have soothing re relaxation, 871,000 views. So learning from some of this stuff and taking even your, your pre-existing audio, which is your, what's amazing is you're the, already the musician, you already have it recorded and you own the rights to it. So you could tap into some B-roll. You could even potentially outsource it. You're like, Hey, here's the music. You send somebody on five or something. You just want, I want some beautiful, like, what do we have here? Animated photos, similar to these AI generated photos. There's some, this is pretty cool. I mean, we have, we do have a little bit of uh, another layer of kind of like light birds, but here's, here's what we're after. This video has 3.5 million views. And so back to our potential, you know, 3.5 million for if, if we're getting maybe a $2 CPM here at, at minimum, then we're talking at 3.5 million, uh, $2 CPM, $2,000 for every million views, right? So, so it'd be about $7,000 potentially earned from this video. And the range of that is probably anywhere from 5,000 to over 10,000 from this one video. In fact, and I always wonder people who listen to this that don't have YouTube premium, because I'm like, <laughs> how peaceful is that? Like when there's multiple ad spots, like you're in the middle yeah. of the thing and then all of a sudden you get hit like Hertz car rental is the data, you know, you're like, God, it kind of breaks my piece. But, but realizing an eight hour and nine minute video that there's probably ad spots every 15 to 30 minutes. Um, and therefore the person who just turns it on and leaves that on why they're chilling at their house or working in their garage or doing chores, these could be, this video could have generated $22,000 who knows. So anyways, just thinking about the assets you already have, the things that exist in your library already, which is all of this music, and one doesn't, not that you have resistance to this, but one doesn't, um, I would say, eliminate the other. Like someone buying this for $1, they're either not going to find it or they also will because they're a super fan and they don't even find your video. I think that sometimes as creatives, especially as musicians, we could benefit from um, thinking about the 2023 opportunities of earning money from our music, which could also include streaming platforms and things like that. I okay. think um, Luna already has 350 videos. So you're talking probably 10 to 12 hours, if not more, of music you could take 40 of those videos um of the same mood and genre put them together and you've got like a three four hour playlist right there so you know opportunities to repurpose the existing content on the channel if they haven't already done that great great tips okay as we land the plane smash like i picked this one out rob because we have lunch to freedom it's here to help people make money online but as we'll see when we watch this first video. Do you enjoy reading books? Today I'm about to share with you how you can make this 100 to 200 an hour is by an AI reading channel. books. Yes, mm -hmm. you heard me right. You can make $100 an hour reading books. AI if voice. If you're interested. Make 
B-roll. Make sure you stick with me to the end. I'm going to tell you how. Script. Clearly AI. How you can start making the money right after this. If you are interested, make sure to stick with me until the end. Roll Hi, welcome to Lunch to Freedom. In this channel, we are all about making more money and becoming financially free. And this can be achieved by having multiple streams of income. Okay. So there's a video. There's you shorts enjoy as reading well. Books? Now we are at, uh, at 1,200 subscribers. Three best apps that pay you real money. Update 2021. Ooh, that didn't crop very well. Space and tech-savvy world, every American is diverting to make money through smart no work captions. rather than hard work. Well, there's kind of captions, but there it's just like a crop in of... Mm. And it looks like... Is Three this a remix feature? That pay you real money. No. Update 2021. I don't even know what this is. In today oh, sound effect. Okay, so this is kind of an attempt at a at a faceless channel, clearly. We're not registering over here. I How to don't want to make any accusations, but I wonder if there's some views being make purchased. Make fast money as a teen. College and high and school subscribers students that often have been purchased. wonder about how they can earn money, preferably through a process or a way that does take very long. Sometimes they find themselves... Because also comments, I mean... A thousand views is is pretty legit. If it's a very engaged thousand views, you might want to see five, 10, 15, 20 comments from that, perhaps. Three best. So I wonder if this thing's kind of getting inflated up because there's no comments here. And I don't know if that's a legit a thousand subscribers gained, but that's just some predictions from doing this for a while. So Rob, over to you. I do want to check the name of the channel. Uh is it specifically lunch to freedom or is it, should it be launch to freedom? Because I see a rocket presumably launching into the sky. My I'm guess was an like, unusual name. My guess was like, like make money on your lunch break. Did I read <laughs> yeah, too far yeah, into yeah, it? Maybe, I literally, maybe. that's what I was like. Cause I was like, it is for sure lunch, but I was like, is it, you're right. Like it says lunch, but it's a rocket. So it maybe should be launch. Maybe also, I'm sure Launch to Freedom was taken. Probably, probably. I think another thing I noticed was, I may be wrong again, Sean, you'd have to show me the um, latest uploads. Have they posted consistently in the last couple of months? Oh, yeah, it hasn't been four months since an upload. So I guess uh, the question here is, what what's happening? Are you um, submitting this channel because you're looking to completely restart the channel from scratch? I, what I will say is that I think this era of um, AI-generated voice and stock B-roll is going to be a radically different place in about six months' time because the, the, the sophistication of AI tools coming now. I mean, we've, we're starting to see um, chat GPT-4 literally from prompts doing everything like the scripting the filming the voiceover etc cetera, etc cetera, without almost any human input other than a few prompts so right. i can imagine ai style content being significantly better than what this currently is um so i think if you are going to have a faceless channel that uses ai to a strong degree learn how to prompt ai tools that's the skill i think that all of us need to be at least learning to some extent um, at the moment. Thumbnails look as if they're from a different channel with every single one. They're like a, a brand new template with each of them. Um, as you say, Sean, the view counts on some of these seem healthy and consistent, but how reliable are they? We just don't know. And I guess it, it's the value proposition that you want to launch people into financial freedom. Yeah, I mean, how to earn passive income, how to make money online, different remote work and self-employed employed businesses. I'm going to go out on a limb here and actually guess that perhaps this individual invested in um, some kind of a faceless channel. I don't want to call them a scam, but a lot of them kind of are. And sometimes they're high paying. And if if anyone's done that successfully, then great. But People make big promises and they under deliver of, of making easy riches or easy success on YouTube. And that's why we're so adamant of like, this is not a get rich quick thing. It's a hard work thing. It's a learn and level up thing. It's a get your skills going thing. 
because I also wonder if even the creator themselves, and I've been, we've coached a few people like this where they're looking for advice to like pass along to their editor. Like if you outsource this, they're just kind of templating you just thumbnails. They're templating you AI voices. They're using the same B-roll. And they, the individual themselves might not even be behind these videos. They might not be architecting these videos. And the problem again with these faceless cash cow channel offers too is, you know, you're just one of many and, and it's a kind of a law of diminishing returns in terms of with content, such low quality, whether that's just the AI voice or just kind of basic information where I would take it to a different direction is to, if we kept going down this route is I would get heavily involved. Like you don't necessarily have to edit yourself, but if you bring in, even if you're using AI editing, like I used, um, video.ai the other day. It's a cool tool that'll help you do vertical video. And it watches one of my YouTube videos and it pulls out some vert vertical video clips. If I just clicked export though, it was not very good. Mm. I, I trimmed the front, I trimmed the back. I changed the template, I moved the captions. I created a headline. I uh, extended the end a little bit. The first three weren't that great. The fourth and fifth one was great. Exported that uploaded it natively. I want to encourage you, whether this applies to this channel or not, you're watching this, don't take shortcuts. Um, I was thinking about this this morning. Even if you're a business owner, entrepreneur minded, and you want to do a channel like this, where you're like, I want to hire somebody, I'll hire an editor, thumbnails from Fiverr, I'll do all the things. I want to challenge you, get your hands dirty, roll your sleeves up, and get into the actual weeds and education of YouTube best practices first. Because even if eventually you you delegate things, you want to know even what standard to hold people to. The difference between one Fiverr thumbnail editor and another one. The difference between AI voices. I would never accept if someone submitted this video to me, I would say the voices, there's better AI voices out there. Give me another one. And I, it's just a guess. But I my thought is they probably were paying per video. Um, maybe they paid somebody a bunch of money to like set up a faceless channel for them. And then they were paying per video and it might've been $25 a video. This is common. Making money is an important part of our And, life. and then the promise is we'll just keep and going, keep, keep going, keep going. And like, even this, uh, number three of our, just kind of, I mean, the audio, some of the B-rolls good, but yeah. And, and so they might've grown tired or ran out of money. And that's just one prediction uh, of, of how this happened. I don't, my guess is the individual themselves was not editing, picking out the AI. And if that, if they were, the same advice applies. There are better AI voice tools. The editing could be another level. So if you stick with this, it's, it's taking it up to uh, a, another level of, I actually think the model can work. It's just a matter of not being at the lowest level of quality, but going to the highest level of quality, the best AI voices, the best music, good music from Epidemic Sound and not the YouTube music library, like all these little details, sound effects, editing, pacing. So when somebody just gives you a boilerplate video that doesn't have good pacing, the music's too loud, the AI sounds kind of robotic, the script's kind of average, there's a bunch of fluff words in it, it comes straight out of chat GPT and, and there's fluff in it and it hasn't been perfected or polished by a human that is going to lose to the person who just did the six things I described and actually enhance those tweaks. And so the need of skilling up is a big deal. And then Shelton asks, what are your thoughts on having a mix of faceless content where you are filming yourself as well? I think that also is one of the models. I mean, kind of reminds me of Evan Carmichael. Um, you know, he's heavily motivation using clips of Oprah and Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, but he's the host. I think that, uh, you know, one of the things we've been teaching in, in, in VRA is OPC, other people's content, uh, under fair use, where you still, Evan Carmichael is a good example of that. He's using, um, you know, other people's content, but he's making something heavily new and he's the host. I think that, um, they they say these days that AI is not going to replace humans, but a human using AI is going to replace you if you don't <laughs> use AI. And so ultimately, um, a, a human, it's, it's kind of like there's this movie called Universal Soldier 
with uh, Jean Claude Van Damme. There's probably oh, other examples. How classic is that one? And wow. and this is this is what the future looks like. I don't know if the analogy makes sense, but yeah, this right here is the future of content creation: a human enhanced by AI. And so it's it's throwback Tuesday today, uh, but but who who's gonna win versus the Universal Soldier? Somebody that is human, but they got the bio enhancements. Uh, the AI enhancements. And so I don't know if that makes sense. Rob, what do you think about that analogy? If Jean-Claude Van Damme does not have 200 million subscribers by this time next year, Sean, you're going to have a lot to answer for. Uh, I watched a um, video from Casey Neistat today and he let um, ChatGPT script his uh, video. And it was funny in that it was kind, it kind of had some Casey motifs like go, using a um, hoverboard, going to famous places in New York, doing drone shots. But it was so wooden and awkward. And I think Casey summed it, summed it up quite right at the end that currently AI lacks soul. So you can't mm. just take the prompts of AI and let it do all of the work. It still requires that human experience and passion and I guess wisdom and knowledge and and vulnerability, uh, you know, and the almost like the, you know, the rough edges that still needs to be put into any AI curated content. Uh, but yeah, Universal Soldier, big throwback. I do remember that one. Classic. I will say uh, it is funny. People are saying like, I never saw it. Now I'm interested. I, I can't guarantee that it's that great of a movie. It's not necessarily. I think, I think the first one is the 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 sequels are a, a little. I I do I, I would I've been talking I don't know what I'm on I'm on some nostalgia I posted about Howard the Duck yesterday my wife's gonna find me watching Howard the Duck Universal Sh Soldier she has zero interest in these things but but my point I think that Dolph Lundgren lacks soul too because these guys did not really have <laughs> when, when the universe when the AI see that this is actually a good point Jean Claude Van Damme <laughs> is the perfect example of <laughs> because he started to get his soul back i think that that is the key rob is he started to fight against the ai and so you don't want the ai to take over to make you soulless you want to be you want to have that you want to stay human but use the ai to enhance your content creation <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if we're talking about youtube anymore sean but i love it i love it uh, <laughs> people are uh, we're gotten a uh, massive throwback today uh i must break you i think was was that um dolph lundgren said that i think howard the duck shout out smash like if you're here for the throwback movies um hey today's stream brought to you by vidiq rob what are you guys doing at vidIQ? How can people connect with you? What what is vidIQ? Oh. And where are you? What are you guys doing on YouTube? What aren't we at vidIQ uh, these days? Uh, we are very much uh, like Sean and Think Media, uh, a YouTube channel and uh, software that just wants to help you take your channel to the next phase of your YouTube journey, wherever you are on that journey. YouTube enabled me. Oh, oh, that's me. Uh, YouTube enabled me to turn my passionate hobby into a life-sustaining, career-defining life change. And I want to try and enable that for as many creators as possible. And you can see that through the videos I make on a very regular basis on the vidIQ channel. But not only are we offering all of these uh, free videos for you to enjoy, but we also have our tools that are now being radically enhanced by Jean-Claude Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren in yep. our AI tools. Um, I'm going to be pushing for those um, image rights to be added to our tools tomorrow. So, um, yes, yeah, stick around for that. But you, you saw one of our tools today, the uh, Generate tool, which you type in a couple of words and it'll give you a title, a script, template thumbnails, scripts, et cetera, et cetera. But then if you dig into the tools, we've got the title generator, the daily ideas. I think you mentioned that earlier on as well, Sean. And yeah, in a new age of AI tools, I mean, we're excited today. But just imagine where 
vidIQ is going to be with its tools tomorrow. And yeah, as you see, the uh, 30 day trial, we've just $1, I think that's 98% off. So do take advantage of it. Yes. And so always grateful for Rob Drop and Massive Wisdom. Remember, we are action takers here in the Think Media Podcast community. And so I'm curious, what are you going to do next? I'm going to put a couple comments up on screen. Smash like if you got value today. Um, watch the replay. Of course, we're reviewing different channels, um, but there's so many nuggets that you could say, how does this apply to my channel? How can I improve my titles, my thumbnails, the messaging of my channel? We talked a lot about business models, strategy, earning income, a lot of different things. And so, uh, hey, Daniel said vidIQ helped me get about 300% increase in subscribers last month. Awesome report, Daniel. And so if you want to check out, of course, that 30-day trial too, and you're watching this, you could get into the paid plan for just a dollar at vidIQ.com forward slash think and start growing your channel today. Sheila says, I would love to know what I need to do to improve my videos. Check out the replay. Uh, that would be, uh, my biggest thing. Robert just says, yes, I want to take action. Um, simply smoothly said, do the voiceovers and definitely watching the replay. Amazing. Yep. Voiceovers, I think would be great narrating through. You're making great content. Congrats on all your success with those shorts. Um, and, uh, vidIQ is a huge help on the back end of YouTube. Amazing. Amazing. So, Hey, uh, thick media podcast, subscribe. If you're not subscribed, smash like, if you got value today. And uh, we are doing a free live training later. I'm going to rest up. I'm going to have some more q and I'm going to be jumping on with Melissa talking about how one video generated over $19,000. I'm breaking down the whole case study to show you all the economics and everything. So uh, check that out. I don't know what the link is, but find it somewhere. And uh, maybe Victoria or somebody here will drop that in the comments. But that's going to be fun a little bit later. And then click or tap the screen if you haven't seen the latest episode of the Think Media Podcast. Every Tuesday, we drop a new episode of the Think Media Podcast. It's out on audio, but it's also available, of course, right here on YouTube on the Think Media Podcast channel. Sending you love and respect today. Grateful for you. Rise and grind. Peace out.